Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Pash On Podcast. Let's get started with your host, Brian Pash. Hi, this is Brian Pash, and welcome to another podcast. On today's show, I have the team from AutoWeb, and we're going to be discussing the latest BPE research report on their platform. Let me first introduce Matt DeVay. He's the VP of Industry Relationships. Matt, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, Brian. I'm excited to be here along with my team. Great. Well, why don't you take a moment to just let everyone know who is going to be on today's podcast, and then we'll get to meet them in a few moments. You bet. We've got we've got Corey Naki here. He leads our sales and retail operations team. Uh, we've got Patrick Ucci here. He leads our partnerships with large dealer groups. And we've also got Tony Shariha here who leads our partnerships with agencies and, and wholesale partners and other um, third-party auto marketplaces. Great. Well, we have a lot to talk about today. So let's set the context of today's podcast. We have released the AutoWeb Research Report, and this follows on the heels of a groundbreaking research report we uh, released just a few weeks ago on the outcomes of Google SEM campaigns as they're run by the majority of agencies that serve auto dealers. Now, there's always exceptions to the rules, but in general, what we discovered is that although dealers are spending tremendous amounts of money on Google ads campaigns, no one was really looking at the outcomes or putting any critical thought towards the metrics that were being used. And the purpose of the research report was to give dealers context that we need to have a different framework or a lens to look at our different advertising partners to make sure that they are bringing shoppers to the dealer's website and that we should be differentiating between traffic and shopper traffic that is interested in a new or used car. Before we get into our research with AutoWeb's platform and the key findings. Matt, for any dealers or OEMs who are not familiar with AutoWeb and the general platform, can you give us a thumbnail about the company? You bet. AutoWeb's been around in some form or the other since, uh, since the mid-90s. It started as Auto by Tell, um, and then within our portfolio of websites we've got usedcars.com i mentioned autobytel.com car.com usedtrucks.com and then it's all under the auto web umbrella and we've been around for quite some time and really the the way we started was as a as a a lead facilitator um where we're the largest supplier of form leads into the OEM sponsored third party lead programs. And then from there, we've, we've evolved really as Jared Rose come on as CEO um, over the last few years, we've really evolved into a more comprehensive uh, solutions provider for dealers and OEM partners and agency partners um, where we can match our shoppers with the correct um, dealer or OEM customer. Well, that's super important, Matt, that dealers understand uh, whether they like it or not, the third-party marketplace websites are part of our consumer shopping journey. People go to independent marketplace websites for price discovery, price comparison, uh, availability, selection. So, Matt, When you hear a dealer say, "Uh, I don't like third party marketplace websites, I'm just going to get all the traffic to come to my website. What's your response to that? (laughs) Well, I understand. I understand their point of view because they they think of it as competition. And 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 there's often this argument uh, from dealers uh, that 
that third parties are taking shoppers that were destined for them in the first place. And I, I would take issue with with that, because I think I know myself as a, as a as an objective shopper, I'm I'm looking for the best vehicle, the best price, uh, and I'm doing a lot of research for such a big ticketed item before I even get to a, a dealership or, <laughs> in today's world, uh, decide where I'm buying my vehicle online. Um, so, I, I I if I were a dealer, I'd want to think of creative ways to partner with these third-party marketplaces, knowing that consumers rely on them for an objective shopping experience. So I can ensure that my brand is being presented in the best light. Well, one of the reasons why I think dealers have had more of an adversarial relationship is that I believe Google agencies have fed dealers a story which we've debunked in our research report that uh, just by buying keywords, they'll be able to intercept the majority of the in-market shoppers through Google SEM campaigns. And what we published just a few weeks ago on the unexpected or, well, surprising outcomes from Google SEM campaigns in, in a large study we looked at 1 million SEM phone calls generated by typical dealer campaigns to sell newer used cars. And less than 13% of those phone calls was a sales opportunity, the majority for fixed stops, meaning service and parts. We also challenged the Google metric called store visits, where it's very popular for Google agencies to optimize campaign performance on phone calls, lead forms, and store visits. Yet what we found out is that at least three to four times more people per month are on the dealer's lot for service. Anthony, um, you have deep experience using Google ads. I love you to give listeners a little background on yourself. You're working obviously with agency partnerships, online retail. Did it surprise you that the majority of measurable outcomes, the metrics that are fed into Google SEM campaigns were not for sales, but for service? Thank you so much, Brian. Um, yeah, I, I've been on the auto web team here for just about four years. Uh, working with our ad server and our platform. And prior to that, um, I spent a lot of time with SEM campaigns, uh, working within Google ads and, and even selling and working with dealers with Google ads campaigns. And Google ads, I, I have to tell you, is an incredible tool. Um, it just has such great reach and it's very detail oriented. Um, but there's a few opportunities to make some minor mistakes within Google ads that can cause some big problems. And, and with this great reach that Google Ads has, uh, pinpointing the exact audience that we're off that we're after can be a challenge. So we're looking for that, those in-market shoppers that are ready to buy. And, and I'm not surprised at all um, hearing that a lot of the calls and the visits are, are for service. Well, I tried to use this analogy and I'm just using this to illustrate the point is that if a local restaurant used Google ads to advertise its menu or specials, the people that come to that restaurant inside the physical property are by a far vast majority, they're either to pick up food or to eat inside the restaurant. Uh, the same thing with say a restoration hardware showroom. If restoration hardware was advertising in the local community to come out to the showroom, people who go to restoration hardware are there to shop. They're not pulling up in their pickup truck with a broken chair or a torn couch or a, a broken light. They know that they call customer support and restoration hardware will either have someone pick up the damaged goods or they send a, a shipping label. 
And so in that case, store visits metric makes a lot of sense as a measurement of the success of the ad campaign. But for car dealers, which many dealers buy their own name or they buy broad geo terms like Honda dealer or Honda dealer near me, they never questioned that, hey, those store visits could just be people who are clicking on my sales ad and coming in for service. And so the unintended consequences, as you said, Tony, is that for certain industries, the reach and measurement tools from Google ads is really awesome. But for automotive, since we have two primary business units, one much larger in transactional volume, uh, that service over sales, we need new tools to connect with in-market shopping audiences. And this is the framework that attracted me to look at the auto web platform. Now let's talk about the platforms themselves. You've built online presence and people find in search, autobytelcar.com, usedcars.com, usedtrucks.com. And um, Matt, what are they finding on these sites and how are you encouraging or leveraging these sites to generate leads and referral traffic? Well, for us, it's, it's taking it a step further from Google uh, because the consumer, once they come to our site, has to qualify themselves more, uh, more clearly. So what that means is they come to, they come to autobytel.com and, and then they're driven to select their make model of interest and input their zip code. From that, that's how we trigger our ad platform. So the consumer can carry on in their shopping journey after they, after they submit that information and they can complete a traditional digital form lead where they give us their name, email, phone, uh, zip code, click submit. Um, that lead gets routed to a dealer. Dealer calls the consumer and says, "Hey, I've got a Honda Accord to sell for you to sell to you." Um, but what that does is also acts as a trigger for our ad platform. So if that consumer is is on AutoBuyTel.com, has selected a Honda Accord in the four eight one six seven zip code, well, then we we ping our traffic platform to return advertisers that are looking to target people looking for a Honda Accord in that area, show those advertisers. And so the consumer can then click on click on one of those ads to continue their shopping journey on either the dealer website or the OEM website, whoever the advertiser may be. But it's just, it's really, for us, I, I describe it as a really enhanced way to, to target your your advertising at active shoppers because we know they're active shoppers because not only did they come to our site looking for a vehicle either organically through paid search, paid social, however they got there, but then they had to select a make and a model, put in a zip code, see the ad, click on the ad, and then end up over on the advertisers page. So that inherently just creates a lot more intent of, from our consumers. And Tony, since you have deep experience with Google ads, what I'm hearing, instead of spraying and praying by buying the dealership name or Honda dealer near me, which we now know attracts so much service business, the auto web platform is like the scoop that goes through the beach on the sand to find those golden nuggets or rings or diamond uh, jewelry that people left in the sand. You're, you're more efficiently identifying the intent and then that traffic by the nature of your methodology or filtering methodology, that has to be more engaged than the type of traffic that dealers are seeing from their generic Google ads campaign. Am I correct? Yeah, Brian, it's it's a really great conversation because I have this talk every day with ad agencies or our performance partners. And, and I think the big challenge um, when working directly with dealers is to educate the dealers and to show them a true apples to apples comparison of our traffic, our users with our intent 
versus the, the Google ads, you know, trying to segment that portion of the Google ads traffic that's a similar intent um, is, is difficult, but it's necessary to do. The devil is really in the details um, when it comes to it. And, and not only uh, is our audience 100% like shopper focused, uh, it's typically cheaper on that apples to apples comparison versus a similar Google ads click. And we've actually demonstrated that in the research report. You see, when I talked to Jared Rowe, CEO of AutoWeb, he said, Brian, we have a great platform. Uh, we're just having a hard time communicating the value and the quality of our traffic. And he said, would you look into it? And I said, well, I will look into it, but I won't do a research report unless I believe that the traffic is of high quality. And here's what I found out, Tony, and I want Patrick to comment in a minute, is that most dealers don't have the ability to differentiate from their Google ads campaign, which people were coming in for service and which people were coming in for parts and which people were coming in to shop. And that's because dealers Google Analytics accounts weren't set up to track consumer click activity. Uh, you know, did they look at photos? Did they download the Carfax report? Did they look at um, you know the video? And and Patrick, you work with large dealer groups, so uh, please introduce yourself with a little bit of your background. But isn't it true uh, the larger dealer groups have internal marketing teams, more sophisticated? marketing analysis. And I think one of the, the, the benefits going forward for you and your large dealer group team is that uh, we're recommending a set of goals uh, to really help dealers see shopper engagement, not just from AutoWeb, but from any referral source. Yep. Thanks, Brian. Yep. It, you're absolutely right. And one of the challenges that I've had and, and quite frankly, the large dealer groups have had, uh, even with their own independent teams, have been to decipher through the, the analysis that they do just exactly what's being delivered, right? So there's a habitual um, spending pattern that's been historically taking place in this space, uh, specifically with the Google mechanisms, right? So what we've found, fortunately, through your due diligence and, and through our interaction with our company, is the ability to provide a better value that we can now quantify uh, and, and, and highlight for the dealer groups that we work with, the dealers that work with, big or small, it really doesn't matter, but with my specifics, with large dealer groups, in an even more effective form to build that value proposition so that they can have a clear line of sight on goals and the ability to, uh, to achieve those goals. Yes. And, you know, Patrick, uh, specifically, I've worked with the auto web team to define a new view in Google analytics. Uh, and I had recommend to the auto web team, create a new view. So the dealers uh, feel comfortable that you're not touching any goals in any existing views, create a clean view set up these engagement-based goals, and then show them that the auto web uh, traffic is really highly engaged shoppers. And the same view, which is so, so uh, eye-opening, same view can be used to look at their email traffic, their Google ads campaign traffic, their Facebook traffic, any advertising channel that they're using. Dealers never were encouraged to set up uh, sales specific goals and engagement goals based on shopper actions. Like I said, we can't use any more phone calls as the primary optimization goal for Google ads because less than 13% are sales calls. We can't use Google's recommended store visits because at least three to four times more people per month are on the dealership lot for service. And I think what I realized is that AutoWeb was basically disadvantaged because from a Google campaign perspective, it was showing all these conversions, but no one was willing to say, but have you listened to the phone calls or does, does that store visit metric sound right to you? You know, Corey, you're part 
of the AutoWeb team that is supporting the clients, you're having conversations with them. Do you think having engagement-based measurement will allow your team to better communicate and show uh, the value of the auto web traffic compared to their other more, well, higher invested channels? Yeah, without a doubt. Thanks, Ryan. It, 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 gives a, it gives a baseline from which they can uh, which they can show the success for the dealer. Uh, as everything comes into Google Analytics, how can we how can we say which is being successful, which is which is failing? Um, and that's one of the things that as we go through the onboarding process with our dealers, we're able to get it set up exactly like you said, those new views within Google Analytics. So when we have our follow up calls with the dealers, our, our monthly coaching calls with the dealers, we're able to review those analytics with them um, and really open their eyes. Uh, some immediate success that we've had with the deal with these dealers have, have made them. I wouldn't say they question their spin, but made them look at their spin a little bit deeper uh, than before. Right. Well, one of the other revelations from our Google SEM research report that we just released a few weeks ago was that the value of third-party marketplaces have really evolved. Um, Matt, as you mentioned, the company started as a lead gen tool, but now that first-party data is really a valuable asset using the audience of consumers who visit your website network now can be leveraged to run very efficient VIN specific campaigns for dealers because instead of spraying and praying or guessing intent, these people who are effectively have double opted in. And so let's talk about that. In addition to leads, in addition to the expectation that the people coming to your website, or excuse me, to the dealer's website are highly engaged. How are we using this audience to do better customizable uh, PPC ads or more intelligently targeted Facebook ads? Right. Well, our first, first thought there is our, our dynamic inventory targeting product. So that that's unique in that what we're doing is taking the inventory feed from our, our dealer or OEM customer and then populating the specific ad unit with the with the newest uh, with it can be a new or used vehicle, but with the specific VIN based on that make model of intent from the consumer. So they come to our site looking for that new Honda Accord. Let's say you're a you're a CarMax advertiser. Uh, and you want you then tell us, hey, I want I want to show the most recent used via or the most gently used uh, vehicle because this consumer was initially looking for a new vehicle. So show them the the 2020 Accord with 10,000 miles, um, and then drive right to the VDP. And so we're able to hyper target based on the fact that it especially works in this in this time frame because of the limited inventory available for new vehicles and, and used vehicles for that matter. But um, all, all that served is more cross shopping between new and used, even though on our sites, we've seen lots of cross shopping anyway, but it's just, it gives the, our advertising partners, the ability to target um, with their own specific inventory in the ad unit itself, which kind of functions like a, Basically, that you're able to to utilize a search ad that that looks like display. <laughs> and one of the things I want to put in context for this podcast is uh, for the dealers who are listening. I am not saying that Google Ads is not effective. Uh, what I am saying is the generic setup, the cookie cutter campaign designs that are being recommended in general, across the dealers in the United States have unintentional consequences, number one. Number two, we have to, as an industry, stop using phone calls and store visits to optimize sales campaigns because they're false friends. Now, if a dealer stopped buying their name, and many have, and if a dealer realized that buying Honda dealer near me or Honda dealer or Honda dealership is mostly for service, 
then the question comes is, well, how do I get more shoppers, Brian, from Google? And there are methods, obviously, long tail keyword campaigns like 2021 Ford Explorer lease. These are people who are navigating a much stronger intent to shop for a vehicle. But here's what you find out. The volume, the number of hits on those longer tail keyword campaigns is not as much as dealers were seeing in these broad campaigns. And what you're going to see is you're not getting a lot of conversions on them, meaning phone calls, lead forms, chats, and texts for sales. If you step back, if you're willing to be open to observe, that buying your dealership name and a broad geo term is going to attract most of the conversions and most of those conversions are for service, then a dealer logically has to say, am I really capturing all the shoppers in my local market? And the answer is no. Google Ads isn't going to do that completely. And now we need to go and obtain first party data that you can understand and use that first party data to connect your brand within market shoppers. And here's what we found out. Uh, in the report, cars.com showed a lift when they applied their audience to normal Facebook and Google ads campaigns. There was a lift in performance. Um, Auto Trader said the same thing, is that their audience is 15 times more likely to purchase a car in the next 30 days than a generic shopping audience. And we're seeing the exact same thing with Auto Web. People who have effectively double opted in, showing intent. Um, you know, Patrick, I know it's a silly question, but if people go through all of that, you know, Self-discovery on Autobytel or one of your partner websites, do you think they're doing that because they want to service their car? No, I'd say quite the opposite. They're, they're specifically looking and in the market to procure uh, a vehicle and not a service appointment. So um, I, would, I would say that that would be the intent. Right. And in the research report, we, we specifically call out um, the, in the study, I asked permission from Springfield Ford, John Watson, Chevy, Woodbury, Nissan, Mount Holly, Nissan, Ed Morris, Delroy, Toyota, Battlefield Ford, Manassas, and others. Give me access to your Google Analytics. Let me look at and analyze the traffic. And here was the great thing. And this is very important. Because there are some scams out there. Email conquest marketing reports generated strange traffic. There are people selling products that have, well, no logical way to validate their claims. Here's what we found. We found forms being filled out, phone calls being made, trade-in evaluations being completed. We found discount coupons in incentive forms being filled out from the traffic that auto web is sending to dealer websites. They weren't clicking on footer links. They weren't staying for two or three seconds. They weren't coming from people all around the world or foreign countries. And I say that because dealers don't normally have the tools to inspect is the traffic engaged. And, and one of the takeaways for all the dealers who are listening here, you you spend hundreds of thousands of dollars, some millions of dollars a year on advertising for your store. And under what framework can you justify not measuring all of the click actions that consumers take on your website so you can see which ad campaigns, which ad messages, which targeting strategies, which geographies that you're targeting are bringing the most engaged shoppers. And I guess that's why this retail transformation and thinking about advertising is taking traction. I've been getting so many calls about this. Um, Matt, you've seen the Google SEM outcomes report. You've seen now this 
research report. Do you think we're at a turning point where dealers are going to start to understand the value of third-party marketplaces and their audiences to capture local in intently shopping consumers as compared to spraying and praying and getting, you know, less than 13% of the phone calls for sales and four times as many service people than salespeople crossing their lot? Yeah, I mean, I think you're helping them get there. All, all this great work that you're doing, both with, you know, looking at our, looking at our platform, but looking at at the, go the waste on Google um, that's inherent, I think is really helping open the eyes to dealers. And, and the best way I, I, I can phrase it is, you know, we typically, when we position our traffic, we position it as a supplement to the to their SEM buy. Because we know that every dealer, most dealers have a big SEM buy, and most of that goes to Google. And so what we're asking typically is, hey, we, we'd just like to be a part of that. Give us a sliver of your overall budget. Um, because our traffic performs like search and then set us up with unique tracking, which again, uh, thank you so much for the help with how to differentiate and, and you, you providing that uh, differentiator between service and sales and I'm looking for hours, et cetera, is so helpful um, because it really drives home the differences in, in the traffic. And e even when we, when, before your report came out, we would set up our, our campaigns in Google and say, Hey, let's compare our actions versus the actions you get from SEM. And we, and we would see, you know, you're buying a Honda Accord uh, deals near me and you're paying five to $6 per, per click on Google uh, versus our, ours, which is a, a, a much better value. But then you would see these metrics around phone calls. And, and I had never thought to say, well, how many of those are service? How many of those versus ours that are sales? So it really serves to get down to what is driving an actual sale and who is an active automotive shopper. And it just, it, it just, as a dealer, I'd be thinking, yeah, if I, if I'm a consumer, I'm going to look at a lot of different places. If I'm an objective shopper, who's not loyal to one brand, who doesn't just always go to the same dealership over and over again, but every time they purchase a vehicle, they research a multitude of brands in order to find the best deal and the best fit for them. Well, you know, what's interesting with the inventory shortages, brand loyalty is even worse. I, I just today, a friend of mine called up and says, hey, I think I want to get an Audi e-tron, the electric vehicle. Could you think you could help me? So I called um, uh, two dealers in Florida, right? One's like, we have no inventory and we'll be out of stock probably for six months. I called another dealer. And again, I'm is asking for a friend. It's like, yes, we had that vehicle $5,000 over MSRP. And what that did to this particular shopper saying, I don't want to pay $5,000 over MSRP. Uh, you know, I may consider another brand. There's a lot of cross shopping going on. And, and let me put in context why dealers should download this report, because one of the recommended actions is to set up hard and soft conversion goals in Google Analytics for sales, for sales, meaning not to say phone call conversion, but sales phone call conversion, and not just text started or text lead, but a sales text lead or chat started, no, a, a sales chat, meaning hard conversions, for sales, and then soft conversions. Did they use the payment calculator? Did they use the digital retailing tool? Did they view the window sticker? Did they look at the Carfax report? Um, these specific recommendations will transform any dealership's Google Analytics account because that new view will allow them to analyze auto webs traffic, Facebook traffic, Google traffic to really see which traffic sources have the most engaged shoppers as a as a subset, we're focusing on the actions that shoppers take. And I really am glad, Matt, that you uh, said what you did. Dealers are spending 
3,000, 5,000, 10,000. Man, I even seen a dealer this summer spend $75,000 a month on uh, Google ads. And what I've seen is for just $1,000, dealers can get uh, uh, high quality shoppers. We have to move away from conversion. Because remember, conversions can be for sales or parts or admin. We have to look at how many sales opportunities we're getting. So that's going to be the new framework we're going to be working on in the auto industry for the years to come. Stop counting cost per lead. What's a lead? It's just a cost per conversion. What was that conversion for? We should be saying, what's our cost per sales opportunity? That's the new framework that we're looking to establish so that dealers move from counting conversions to counting shoppers. Corey, you again, uh, work and head up that retail sales support team. When someone signs up for Auto Web, how often are you reviewing results with the dealers? And um, what's the expectations they could have Uh, if they decide to do business with you? We set up those calls. Not only do we set up an onboarding call when they come on board, but we have monthly calls with them. These are monthly schedules calls that we walk through and we, we, we see the success that they've had for the past month review. We make some adjustments. That's one of the biggest things. Um, Out of web, we truly believe that it's not a size one size fits all. We help tailor that suit jacket to that dealer to help it fit right. What can we, what can we adjust to make sure they're getting the biggest bang for their buck that they spend with Auto Web? So these monthly service calls are not only uh, very beneficial, but our, our customer support team is consistently watching their performance. Uh, they don't wait till the day before the call to study, but they're able to make some make some changes mid month if they see if they see the deliveries maybe a little high, a little low. They're able to bring it in right directly for them, and that's d- through the partnerships that we build with them. Great. Tony, as we bring our podcast conversation to a close, since you've been in the weeds, tactically helping dealers with paid digital advertising campaigns, Matt mentioned, hey, give us a piece of the budget. So what would be an initial spend, Tony, you would recommend for a single point store to invest with auto web uh, that would give them a taste of the quality uh, that your unique audience and targeting strategy would deliver for them. So it's going to depend on the market um, as well as the brand that the dealer represents. I would say on average, um, our average dealer budget will be a little over a thousand dollars per month. So it's only a fraction of what they probably totally spend on SEM. And, and for that $1,000 or that 1500, you're getting a great bucket of clicks and traffic to the website um, of, of in-market ready to buy shoppers. Yeah, and that was the other thing I had to wrap my head around because we have to get away from the mindset of it's like, hey, uh, Brian, AutoWeb sent me, you know, 500 shoppers this month, or excuse me, 500 sessions. We we have to stop thinking that is like the other miscellaneous traffic that comes to the website. We can't look at it as 500 Google SEM clicks because we've just discovered that the Google SEM campaigns are very, very intermixed with service parts and admin So we're talking about a pure shopper audience, double opting in, in their local market and in the shopping mode. I want to encourage dealers to consider that that investment, and I'm not here to count the dealer's money, that investment is insignificant compared to the waste that's in spraying and praying with typical Google SEM ad strategies. And if dealers want more used car shoppers and want more new car shoppers, if that's the intent of their ad strategy, then there's absolutely data-driven reasons for dealers to test the auto web platform. Matt, I'm going to give you the last word today. Um, Matt, as you look at 
the evolving landscape and automotive retail and advertising choices. Is there something you'd like to leave dealers, OEMs, agencies that are looking for better tools, strategies, frameworks to help dealers sell more cars that we didn't cover? Or maybe just a highlight to share your passion for this platform and its value proposition for dealers? No, I mean, I think they need to take <laughs> take your advice, which is to have those hard and those soft metrics and then distinguish them between the two, because that that only serves to reinforce the value of our product. And so when we talk to agencies and we talk to OEMs, I, 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 I position it as a, as a, a way to say, hey, how, how are you measuring your incoming traffic? Because we're confident that our traffic will perform uh, well in comparison, third-party marketplaces I don't feel are going away um, because the consumer craves that objective shopping experience. And if we can all come together to meet in the middle between us, dealers, OEMs, to, to think about the consumer first and providing them the, the best possible way to find and purchase a vehicle, then I think the industry will be better off for it. Well, Matt, uh, I'm going to add to your uh, passionate summary to say this. Dealers have actually state, taken a step backward in recent years with digital retailing, installing more tools on their websites to trap engagement and conversion. Yet many of these conversion goals in Google Analytics, uh, event tracking have really gone to the wayside. And it's not until you do a standardization of hard and soft conversions formatted to discovery, sales intensity, shopper intensity, do you finally have a lens, uh, as you mentioned, uh, to confidently say, I believe our traffic will stack up against any other source. And here's the reason why. It's pre-filtered, double opt-in, confirmed shoppers that are not navigating to the dealership for service and willing to click on any ad, even if it's a lease ad, it's targeted first party audience data. And we have to get away from just, hey, count the leads, because as Matt said, we want to look at leads plus the number of engaged shoppers that are coming to the website. And when we do that, I think that dealers will have a more balanced media mix to help them sell more cars in a digital age. I want to thank Matt and Tony, Corey and Patrick from the AutoWeb team for just spending time with me and allowing me to do this research report. The research report is available to download. You can just go to Pash. Dot com And right on the homepage, you will see an updated banner with the research report from AutoWeb. And I encourage you to not only look at the performance that we documented, I also want you to look at the recommended goals so that you can also create a new view in Google Analytics to set up a sales lens, a shopper engagement lens to look at all your traffic that you're paying for or generating through email marketing. So you'll have a new uh, lens to see which strategies are truly working to help you sell more cars in a digital age. If you enjoyed this podcast, you should know that uh, we have dozens of conversations with automotive leaders uh, working to revolutionize, improve, and well, introduce breakthroughs in automotive retailing. So please check those out. You can go to uh, libsyn.com, uh, Libsyn, uh, and the Apple Podcast Channel, the Google Play Store, uh, Spotify, SoundCloud, anywhere you can look for the Brian Pash Podcast Channel. And one last thing. In November, November 14th, 15th, and 16th is the Automotive Analytics and Attribution Summit in Palm Beach, Florida. It's a beautiful time to be on Palm Beach Island, but it is an excellent opportunity for you to engage with people who want data-driven marketing strategies, who want new ways to optimize digital retailing, new 
strategies for operational efficiency. This is a great conference for people who want to get better, invest in their careers, invest in their businesses. So go to automotiveattributionsummit.com, get signed up and uh, learn about all the great, great people that will be in attendance. And uh, thank you for participating in today's show. And for all our listeners, we'll catch you again on an upcoming podcast. Thank you.